Next, let's consider the case where all three roots are real numbers. This means that all three of our solutions in Z must come from this set because the magnitude is either 20 or 13. And these are not necessarily unique solutions for each polynomial. So for example, one valid polynomial could have a double root in negative 20 and a third root that's 13. We'll count these up by first counting the number of polynomials that have three unique real roots from this set. That's four choose three. We can also have a double root and one that's different, like in the example I gave. We have four choices for our double root and then three choices for a different one. And the last category of polynomials have a triple root and there are four choices for that. This gives us a total of 20 polynomials where all the roots are real. The other case that we can have is if two solutions are not real, that is they're in the complex plane, and then the one remaining solution is real. If we have one solution that's complex, then its conjugate must also be a root. And then we'll let our third solution, z3, be a real root. Let's call it k. So our function, when it's factored, is gonna look like this the product of z minus its three roots. Now we'll multiply this out using the etas. So the coefficient of z squared is the negative sum of the roots. And then we take the pairwise products to get our coefficient of z. So the product of r plus si and r minus si is r squared plus s squared. And then we're going to multiply k by r plus si and r minus si. So I'll just factor that out. That's our coefficient of z. And then we have our constant, which is the product of the roots. That's going to be r squared plus s squared times k. These three coefficients are going to correspond to our integers a, b, and c. So let's write up our equalities. a is the coefficient of z squared, and I'll go ahead and combine like terms. So this is 2r plus k. b is the coefficient of z, and combining like terms, this is 2 times r times k. And our constant term c is this last one. r squared plus s squared appears twice in these equations. We want the magnitude of all three of our roots to be equal to either 13 or 20. If the magnitude of one of our complex roots is 13, then the conjugate also has a magnitude of 13. In terms of r and s, we have that r squared plus s squared is the square of 13, which importantly is an integer. And similarly, if our magnitude is 20, then r squared plus s squared is also an integer. Returning to our equations, we have that r squared plus s squared is an integer, and in the problem statement, c is an integer, which means this k is also an integer. Looking up here at this first equation for a, if k is an integer and a is an integer, then we have this other term 2r is an integer. With this restriction, let's see how many polynomials we can create. We'll start with the magnitude of one of our complex numbers is 13. This means we have a triangle that looks something like this, and the magnitude is somewhere between zero and 13. Since we want this to be a strictly complex number and not real, we can't have r equal to 13. So this is excluded. And again, we want 2r to be an integer. So r is gonna be in this set of fractions that have a two in the denominator. And our largest number is 25 over two. So the number of values in this set, we have one for our zero. And then here we have 25 fractions from one half to 25 halves, and then times two because of the plus or minus. This gives us 51 values for R. We can also have our complex numbers with a magnitude of 20. This means r is less than 20, and 2r is an integer. So r includes zero and all of these fractions, plus or minus, with a two in the denominator. And our largest value is just less than 40 halves or 20, so it's 39 halves. And the size of this set, we have a zero, and then we have in pairs, plus or minus, 39 fractions, which gives us 79 solutions for R. In total, we have 51 plus 79, or 130 possible values for R. Each of these determines a unique value for S, and so a unique Z1 and Z2 are two complex roots and non-real. Our third root, Z3, is going to be one of our remaining real solutions with a magnitude of either 13 or 20. So we take our 130 complex solutions, and each of them can match up with one of these four real solutions for 520 
20 polynomials. So the total number of polynomials from case one, where all three roots were real, we had 20, plus the 520 from case two gives us our answer of 540. If you'd like me to solve any math contest problems, please leave them in the comments.